Meet the Brazilian wandering spider, the eight-legged nightmare that might save lives and ruin dates. Let's talk venom, male elections, and how this creepy crawler is rewriting medical science. Da, da, da. Hello my squishies and welcome back to the ramblings of balloon. In this video, we'll explore the spider's venom and effects, its ecological role, its myths and cultural fame, and even how this venom might help humans in surprising ways. Let's get into it. The Brazilian wandering spider is one of the world's deadliest spiders and possibly the most stimulating. Its scientific name for nutria means murderous in Greek. Yeah, not exactly subtle. There are nine species of Brazilian wandering spider, but today we're specifically going to be talking about Phenutria nigrifenta. Nigrifenta? You know what I'm saying. This spider is locally called Arana armadera or armed spider because it raises its legs when threatened. Sort of like a red panda but less cute. With a leg span up to 15 to 17 centimeters or about 6 to 7 inches and an attitude to match, it doesn't hide in a web. It hunts and will aggressively defend itself if threatened. I mean talk about 8 legs and no chill. Oh, and it has a reputation for showing up in banana shipments. Yep, this spider is lurking in your produce aisle and your nightmares. Alright, so it's big, it's bold, and it doesn't sit in webs. This spider wanders, but what makes it truly terrifying? Let's talk venom. And trust me, this isn't your average ouch it hurts kind of venom. The Brazilian wandering spider's venom is made up of a cocktail of neurotoxins. In fact, researchers have identified at least six potent neurotoxic peptides named PHTX31 through PHTX36. These peptides are broad-spectrum calcium blockers that blocks calcium channels and disrupts nerve signals. Basically, they cause your neurons to dump out neurotransmitters erratically and your muscles stop functioning properly. Neurons are nerve cells responsible for sending and receiving signals that enable us to think, feel and move, and neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that deliver messages between your neurons. This means that your nerve cells are dumping all these chemical messengers that are supposed to be delivering messages between your neurons. After you've been bitten, you'll experience a rapid onset of symptoms, with intense burning pain arriving first on the scene. Thereafter, you'll likely experience sweating, muscle paralysis, breathing issues, tachycardia, arrhythmias, nausea, vomiting, and convulsions. One unlucky patient had heart arrhythmias, pulmonary edema, and even cardiogenic shock from a serious bite. If you think these symptoms are bad, it gets worse. Much worse. One of its most infamous side effects is priapism. Priapism is a medical condition where men experience long-lasting and painful elections. And we're talking hours, not minutes. Damn! The reason why the spider causes priapism is because of a peptide called TX26. This peptide boosts nitric oxide release in your body, and nitric oxide triggers elections in men, so the venom essentially slams that switch to on. This is why it's earned the nickname, Nature's Most Awkward Emergency Room Visit. Now you may be thinking, hey, maybe this could be useful. Unfortunately, these envenomation-induced elections are far from fun. They're usually accompanied by pain and can lead to complications like impotence later. The spider literally said Netflix and nope. What's crazy is that studies on animals show doses as low as 0.2 milligrams per kg can be fatal. And to make matters worse, humans are even more sensitive to this venom than mice or dogs. However, despite the hype, most bites are not fatal. Like puff adders, the Brazilian wandering spiders are known for dry bites, which means they don't inject venom when they bite you. This is interesting because it implies that these spiders are intelligent enough to know when to conserve venom. Thankfully, fatalities are rare and fewer than 15 confirmed deaths have occurred since 1903, with a total fatality rate of 0.3%. Did you like the video? No? Okay, well look this precious little angel in the eyes and tell it that you don't like the video. Hmm, I thought so. Tap that like button. Also, consider becoming a subscribinal because that's what cool people do and I think you're cool, so subscribe. Okay, so your body's freaking out, your pride is in danger and you're rethinking that vacation to Brazil. But don't worry, there's an antidote for the venom and maybe even the embarrassment. Let's talk treatment. Thanks to modern medicine, anti-venom now exists although it's typically used in serious cases. In fact, a 13-year-long Brazilian study found only 2.3% of bites needed antivenom. This in part may be because they don't inject all their venom when they bite. That's because they need to save it for hunting. And yes, I do mean hunting. 
They don't sit around waiting for a little morsel to fall into their lap. Their bite is capable of delivering 1.25 milligrams of venom. But despite such a large venom dose, most people recover with pain management and supportive care. Unfortunately, kids, the elderly, or people with health issues are more at risk. The good news, there is an antivenin. The bad news, the spider is not the only one bringing chaos to the table. Let's see how the Brazilian wandering spider stacks up against the rest of the venomous VIPs. First up, we have the brown recluse. If you're from the United States of America, then you should be familiar with this spider. Unlike the Brazilian wandering spider, the brown recluse does not have neurotoxins. Instead, they have tissue-destroying venom that causes necrosis. These bites tend to be slow, painful wounds that take weeks to heal. Thankfully, serious illness and death from brown recluse bites are very rare. Next up, we have the black widow. The black widow also has a neurotoxic venom and causes a syndrome called latrodectism. This venom causes extreme pain spreading from the bite, muscle cramps, spasms, and systemic effects like high blood pressure and nausea. Fatalities from black widows are exceptionally rare in modern times, but the bite causes hours of agony, but thankfully, no elections. That dubious honor seems to belong to the Phenutria alone. Finally, we have the Sydney funnel web. The Sydney funnel web spider also has neurotoxic venom, which can overstimulate nerve cells and can terminate a human in as little as 15 minutes in extreme cases. Historically, about 13 to 14 deaths were recorded over 53 years pre antivenom giving a roughly 1% fatality rate, making it deadlier than the Brazilian wandering spider. However, since the advent of antivenom in 1980, no deaths have occurred from funnel web bites. While the Brazilian wandering spider is not as toxic as the black widow or the Sydney funnel web, it stands out for combining pain, paralysis, and awkward side effects. Okay, venom battle over. Let's talk about what this spider actually does when it's not sending people to the ER. Brazilian wandering spiders are near the top of the invertebrate food chain. They are nocturnal hunters that prowl the forest floor and vegetation, snatching a variety of prey. Their diet reads like a pest controller's headless. Cockroaches, crickets, catydids, mantises, beetles, and other spiders. Thanks to its potent venom and sizable jaws, it doesn't stop at insects. It can even take down small vertebrates too. That includes frogs, lizards, bats, and even mice. Essentially, if it's small and meaty and crosses the spider's path at night, it's fair game. These spiders help to control pests like cockroaches, so they're creepy but kind of helpful. They're known to inhabit tropical and subtropical forests of South and Central America, with Brazil being the epicenter. They tend to like dense foliage, ground litter, and banana groves. They do live in the city to occasionally munch on cockroaches and other pests. Their predators include birds, cotamundis, and spider hunting wasps. They play a big role in maintaining ecological balance as a top invertebrate predator, but also sometimes prey. So this spider controls pests, terrifies tourists, and now it might fix your love life? Let's see what science is cooking with this venom. Turns out the medical research potential for this spider is nearly endless. Scientists are studying a venom component called the TX2-6 to treat erectile dysfunction. This peptide works by boosting nitric oxide, which is not the same path as the little blue pill. And as of 2023, clinical trials in humans were underway. But it doesn't stop there. Their venom is also being studied for pain-killing properties. Remember those toxins that block calcium channels? Those are of great interest because many pain signals rely on calcium channels in nerves. When combined with morphine, some of the peptides can help maintain pain relief with lower doses and prevents the body from developing tolerance so quickly. The venom is also a valuable tool in neuroscience research. The toxins can block specific ion channels or receptors in nerve cells, so scientists use them to map how those channels work. Studying what the venom does at a molecular level helps researchers understand conditions like seizures, muscle spasms, or nerve damage. Outside of the medical field, venom may even lead to eco-friendly insecticides which affect insects but not humans or livestock. As usual, it's not all sunshine and daisies for the spider. With most dangerous creatures, there's always a boatload of bad PR. From lab hero to tabloid villain, let's talk myths, headlines, and banana drama. These spiders are known as the banana spider. And that is mostly because of a common belief that these spiders are lurking in any bunch of bananas. They frequently show up in viral news, which is sometimes true but sometimes overblown. In a famous recent case in 2023, a supermarket in Austria had to shut down after a staffer spotted a large venomous spider in the banana aisle, believed to be a Brazilian wandering spider. Headlines screamed about a deadly spider that can cause four-hour elections loose in the store. I mean, talk about spicing up your grocery run. 
The store was evacuated and fumigated, though the arachnid so away apparently vanished into the bananas, never to be found. I don't know why the store is still open. Of course, the spider also became an internet legend because of its priapism effect. Another prevalent myth is that it aggressively attacks people left, right and centre, which isn't accurate. Yes, they will stand their ground with fangs bared and even jump toward a threat. Unfortunately, they can leap about one metre, which is nightmare fuel for many. But they're not as aggressive as people think. They only bite when threatened, not for funsies. To wrap up, the Brazilian wandering spider is feared, fascinating and weirdly helpful. They're basically the dead pool of spiders, dangerous, unpredictable and kind of funny. Its venom can cause pain, panic and possibly future medicine. I mean, this venom hits harder than a plot twist in a telenovela. So yes, it might be hiding in bananas, but it's also hiding potential cures. Moral of the story? Don't judge a spider by its bite or its bonkers side effects. From paralyzing venom to unexpected medical breakthroughs, the Brazilian wandering spider proves that nature is equal parts terrifying and brilliant, and occasionally just plain awkward. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the world's weirdest eight-legged nightmares, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss a bite. I mean a beat. And if you're into creepy crawly creatures that pack a punch, go check out my video on the box jellyfish. Trust me, it's not just a blob with stingers. Thanks for watching, stay squishy, stay weird, and stay away from venomous spideys. Bye my fellow loons! Everybody was kung fu fighting! Huh.